for a full tutorial on how to make a scene like this so um it's really easy to do actually um like i'm just gonna give you a brief overview for people who are very very impatient okay here's the brief overview motion track the camera right here i have this 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 was my motion tracking workspace motion track your camera get some good data on there okay once you've motion tracked the camera what you're going to do is um uh, uh set up the tracking scene and do ev do everything that um you have to do and bring in a helicopter model you can model it yourself but i was too lazy so i just brought in a helicopter model from cg trader the link is in the description from up close it's not the best but as you can see the textures are really wonky and low res but from this distance that looks like a really good helicopter then set up a similar hdr set up the lighting match the lighting as you can see i did a little bit of an oopsie here these two containers are intersecting with the foreground which we do not want so let's just bring that back a little bit or something uh, but i don't really care okay um these add animate the helicopter by parenting everything to an empty animating that empty just two keyframes it's really simple and then giving a rotation keyframes to the to the whatever the, yeah the propeller then just rendering it out with some dust on the foreground we're not um i didn't use a smoke simulation because my computer was too weak for smoke simulation also i didn't want to um, comp this in in the composition uh, in the compositing stage of this because i was um lazy to do a whole bunch of alpha over nodes and stuff so i just did the images as planes add-on here's the quick node setup um it looks very easy we just plug the um image sequence or the the movie clip into the an emission shader the color goes to the emission shader um there's a mix shader with the transparency connected and color goes to the factor and there we go that's gonna add some dust and i did a little bit of color grading this is this is the most simple um compositing setup you can get seriously mm, the color grading i did i just wanted to make this a very warm i i wanted to give it that sandy desert vibe so i made it really warm i um if you're using filmic color space um or just um obviously i'm using standard color oh i'm actually using filmic okay i don't really care because it yeah it makes a difference but for me it didn't seem to make a difference i can just bump up the saturation and post in like my editing software of choice i really wanted to go with a warm um kind of thing so i just switch from lift gum again to offset power stop asc cdl or something it worked fine i just made the tone warmer and made this tone cooler but that actually makes it more it's confusing okay a little bit of color grading later and a little bit of rendering later you got a pretty good looking helicopter scene well now um that's the brief overview for people who doesn't want to stay around for an hour and a half watching me do painfully painfully very very bad motion tracking but if you want to well let's go and do some motion tracking open up a new vfx workspace in this new vfx workspace open up your clip um it can be any clip i have a uh, this clip no that's actually the finished animation um there we go this clip open up this clip okay and here's how we're gonna do it you can you know use control click scale that up drag that forward grab that again drag that forward and then grab it again track that forwards you can do that but that that's a painfully painfully long process also it really really isn't my favorite way of doing things in motion tracking let me just show in the areas real quick all right so um let's add some more data um make sure you click team frames um you got one pretty good looking track okay 
Now let's add a more let's add some more tracks. I'm gonna control click on that. And uh, also by the way, this isn't the only way of going through it. There's a lot of different ways that you can go through it. But this is what I chose to go through. Also, if you go to the track, it's really easy to just look at that high contrast spot. As you can see, this isn't really tracking that smoothly, which means it's not really a good high contrast spot. Let's pick something here. That looks pretty good. And let's track that forward. That actually went pretty far. Let's just do that again. High contrast area, drag that forward again. It's really just a process of doing this and doing that and just painfully suffering while motion tracking. See, you can do this, but it's really, really, really painful. Like, like if you're just doing like a really simple one, you can just set up. Actually, I did this method for um, another motion tracking visual effects project, but mm -hmm. for this one, I really wasn't feeling it. So we're just gonna do the lazy method. Um, we're just gonna let Blender do everything. So detect features, track forwards, okay. Detect features, track backwards, okay. Now go back forward a little bit. Detect features, track that backwards, and then here, track that forwards. All right, we got some pretty good looking data. We definitely need more over here. Detect features, track that backwards. 146 again, track that forwards. Just let it, just let it do its thing. Now, don't disturb it, just let it do its thing. Okay, let's do it again. 185. 185. And let's track that. Okay, um, let's detect features here again. 111. Let's go back to 111. And let's um, track that again. Okay, now we got a lot of motion tracking data to work off of. Um, deselect everything to see how it is. We and just browse through it and see where you think you might want a little bit more motion tracking data. Uh, I think I want a little bit more in the background at the end. So let's take some more features and let's track that. Okay, two four forty six, and let's just track that forward. There we go. You got a lot of data. Now it's time to solve the camera. If you get really lucky, um, you can um, get like really good results. I like to just, just pick, I don't know what these are, okay? I'm not a camera visual effects expert. Like if you're a camera visual effects expert, please tell me. I, I don't know what those are. I just do whatever I want. I just click those three, it seems to work. And click keyframe, solve camera motion. Let's see how much we get. Selecting keyframes. Completing solution 99%, refining solution. Six pixels, that's not bad for not doing any sort of cleanup. Like we literally did no cleanup and six pixels is really, really good. Okay, now let's go to the solve panel. Let's go to the cleanup and let's clean some of these data. Clean tracks. Put a reprojection error of one. Um, most of them aren't getting picked. I think that we should turn it up a little bit i usually just go for something like five it seems to work good for me solve camera motion again theoretically we should get a lower camera solve um a pix a uh, solve error but if you get a higher um undo that and just okay oh 0 0.52 pixels right off the bat that's that's really good that's actually amazing for like, we literally did one cleanup and we already got 0 0.52 pixels. That's amazing. Let's filter the tracks a little bit. Um, just to clean up just a little bit more data and let's solve the camera motion. Let's, I'm, I'm just trying to bring this below 0 0.5. That's all I want. Actually, if you get like, okay, never mind. We should have not done that. Undo that. See, for me, 
solving camera motion is like playing with uh, uh, a paper that's lit on fire. You just have to eyeball it. Like, unless it's like a really, really like, um, uh, how do you say this? A really like well recorded and well done footage. And this is not obviously. Um, you just have to eyeball it. That that that's what it is, you know. For me, I just detect feature. Just go, just let it just do its thing and just clean up, clean up, clean up. And words when it's missing a lot of stuff, just add more features. It's it's that's what it is for me. Okay. Now, um, if you don't have like this really good solver like I have right here. Um, what I recommend you do is switch to keyframes. The automatic keyframe isn't sometimes the best. You, if you switch to keyframes, you can suddenly go from like sixty to zero point two. Okay, it, it's switching to keyframes is really important. And also, if you might want to not tick all of that, depending like on what you have. If you have a DSLR and you can control everything, you really shouldn't be taking too much of these stuff. But I have a smartphone. And if you are, I'll say that if you get below one, you will be pretty good um, to continue to this to, to the next step of this tutorial. But if you don't get below one, just keep tracking, keep solving, keep cleaning it up. Also, use these two, okay? Clean tracks, just clean some of these stuff up. And also solve tracks and just keep doing that. It's going to work someday, okay? that That's what it is. Alright, so if you go to the compositing page, um, we have this, which isn't really that spectacular, but we're going to fix it. How we're going to do it? Set the scene. So, let's um, let's split this. Okay. Let's bring this down since we don't need it. Let's make this the 3D viewport. So, this is the camera that we have. Which looks really good. It's got to so um, it's got most of it, but we still don't have like the important parts. So, also, um, even if you're getting low um solve errors, if like the focal length is like going crazy, like it's like over here, that means you failed. You should do try it again. Okay, um, that's what it is. Okay, so let's uh, let's start um adding some cool stuff to it. Okay, um, let's. Um, go to the camera view. Let's set up tracking scene. Set us background. That's already done automatically. As you can see, the camera got the data, but it's all wrong. The orientation is stupid. It's all wrong. It's you might be like, what? So we have to orient the cam? No, no, no. Don't worry. Don't. Worry. We're gonna fix this really easily. Okay, it won't take that long. So how do we fix this? Um, pick a few trackers that you want to be the floor. I'm gonna pick some of these stuff and select floor. Okay, you, the orientation is still off, and we, we're gonna have to change that. But we're, we just have to orient our floor. So um, let's select this and let's set y axis, and let's select something here and set x axis. Okay. Uh, now let's add a layout workspace. Um, let's see how good it is. Um, that's this is actually a really really good um motion track actually. We just have to rotate this a little bit. I think wait. Yeah, the x-axis orientation is a little bit wrong. Wait. Um, let's undo that. Go to the layout. This doesn't have to be perfect in any way, by the way. Just saying. Um, let's let's go back to the solid view. I'm gonna pull this up. Let's start. The compositing is um already uh kind of done um for us. I didn't do this before, but you you can just keep it like that, or if you want to like, you know, do it. It doesn't really matter. But I don't really care. Just do whatever you want. But what I'm going to do, delete everything. Look, I'm sorry. If you want to keep it like that, you can keep it like that. But what I'm going to do, render layers, bring that image to the alpha over, and bring our movie movie clip, movie clip right here. I'm going to bring that to this. 
So now what's gonna happen, basically, what this new setup is saying. Also, by the way, click use notes just in case you haven't clicked it. Click use notes, okay. So, this render layers is what we're going to be rendering, okay? And the movie clip is what we're going to be, uh, is the main video. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna have the movie clip as a, as a post-production step. So we're just rendering our normal image and then we are putting that image on top of the movie image. That's basically what we're doing. Sorry, I got a little bit of a sore throat right now. Um, all right, so, um, okay, let's get this thing started. Um, you can use cycles. I mean, it's recommended to use cycles in, in visual effects because it's, it's so much more realistic, but I found a hack and I'm gonna use Eevee because EV is just, in my opinion, the better render. I mean, it's not better than Cycles objectively, but it renders so fast for me. It's for me with a weak computer. It's a better choice. So let's import in our uh, model. I um, I'm gonna link it in the description. It's a DAE file. So let's helicopter. Um, let's get this. Let's get that import it also if it doesn't work it's something stupid sometimes it just doesn't work just import any helicopter model you want um it's not working right now so i'm just gonna um import uh append no append uh, the helicopter model from before that i made um that not that i downloaded so i'm just gonna go to my there we go helicopter test blend collection um helicopter don't worry don't worry i'm going to be going through the animation i'm just going to delete everything don't panic don't panic okay so um obviously the orientation is off because this isn't the same scene place where you want the helicopter to land this time i want this to land horizontally because i think that's gonna look cooler because i did the vertical landing last time this time i want this to go horizontally or maybe just go vertical again i don't know just, just do whatever you want. I'm just gonna go sort of sideways like this. Looks pretty cool. Okay, now. Um, this is way too small right now, so let's scale that up. It, th this is not going to be really suitable for a cycles workflow, but what I'm doing for EV workflow, this is suitable. So, wrap that in the synaxi. And yeah, you basically have a helicopter that you can control. So. Uh, sorry, I accidentally went to render view. Um, let me just go back to not much your wireframe. Okay, so let's just um match the scale. This looks a little bit like it's uh, too far away from me, so I'm just gonna match the scale a little bit. Let's add. Let's just do that a little bit, and let's bring it down. Now, if we go back to wireframe view, that looks that looks pretty good. All right, so. We're gonna animate it going up down okay so when i want this to like go down and i want this to like this looks a little bit too big for a helicopter also i'm not a helicopter expert don't attack me saying that this is the right size for a helicopter i don't even know what this helicopter model is even supposed to be called okay so um uh at the frame where i want this to land which is at around 200 I'm not going to do the landing part. I'm just going to make it like come like it's landing. You can do the landing part, but okay, that, that's going to be like a little, little homework for you. So, um, let's just, uh, place the helicopter where you want it to be placed. That looks pretty good. I'm going to bring this just a little bit forward. Um, let's grab down the X axis just a little bit and rotate down the z-axis just a little bit. Also, we're gonna have to mask out the tree. That's going to be very not fun to mask out, but you have to do that because the tree is just like the most annoying thing like that has ever existed. That tree, it took me so long to mask out. I, I hate that tree. But if you want to get away from the masking, which is absolutely painful, you can do a little bit of a trick and just make sure the, pro the propeller is not hitting the tree by scaling it in of course it won't look as realistic but it looks pretty acceptable to me 
And I like this small sized helicopter. I think it's a little bit more realistic. Alright, so. Let's see if that looks pretty good. Alright, so. Um, go to the frame where you want this to land. Which for me is 210. Okay. Let's add a... Let's add a location rotation. And when you go up, okay, let's add a rotation, rotation, location, rotation, and all oh, right, this is just try your best to not intersect with the tree. Bring this all the way up and insert location, rotation. And when you view the animation, you got a helicopter coming down, I think. Yeah, it's not, it's not really that great. But we're gonna make it great. So, first of all, that's a little bit too high. Let's bring it a little bit down. Um, also, I want this to be like visible in the camera view. So, I'm just gonna put that somewhere in there. Insert location rotation. Alright, so. We're just gonna have it land right here. Alright, that looks pretty good. One thing that I will do is to turn this around like this. Right, this just looks better. Insert location rotation. Obviously we have two keyframes right here. Let's just delete this one and bring this back here. Alright, so we got the base um, helicopter animation done. Um, so the base helicopter animation is done. But it looks like it's going a little bit too slow for my liking. So let's, um, and also it's like, it's it's in a Bezier um, uh, interpolation, which is terrible for this kind of situation because it's going slow and then it's going fast and then it's going slow. We want this to be linear, all right? That's just gonna help it. And this, as you can see, this is going a little bit too slow for my liking. So let's just bring the keyframe in to somewhere you like it. I'm just gonna bring this into somewhere like 120 all right so let's continue um this looks like a pretty good speed for me that might look a little bit too fast but we're gonna make it look better also from like here this looks like way too tilted and tilt this back there we go that looks that looks a lot better all right so all right that looks really good um, let's add, like, if you go and search up helicopter reference, okay? Let me just search it up in Google. Um, helicopter landing reference. Um, as you can see, just like a quick helicopter land. Alright, so like, when helicopters like land, what I have found is that they're really shaky. Like, like, like here. You see that they're they're rotating and and it's like it's really shaky. And just just search up a reference photos and you can um see that it's really shaky and it's really hard to recreate that by hand. That's why we're going to be using um the wonderful land of noise modifiers. So, so how do we use noise modifiers? Well, let's go to the graph editor. All right, so we got the all of these um, values. We're only going to be touching the rotation values because it's only rotating. I don't want the main motion to be affected by this graph, by this noise texture, by this noise. So let me pull this up a little bit. All right, let's click the Y rotation, go to the modifiers and add a noise modifier. So when you play it, it's going to go crazy. It's 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 crazy, right? Well, if you bring the scale up and the strength down, you're gonna get some natural looking shake. That might be a little bit too much, but that's something I like to decide after um I've done my main stuff. So noise modifiers again, scale that up, strength down. 
let's have a look at that. See, now it's got a little bit of that shake. Be careful, you don't want to use too much of that shake. I'm just bring that back up a little bit. And if you, because if we do, it's gonna look like it's about to explode, which uh, it might be a cool thing to do, but I, I don't want to explode my helicopter. Um, so I just have these noise modifiers. This is what like for me brings like um the main like the main appeal of um the animation of this. So bring the strength down to something like zero point one. Maybe bring it a little bit up. All right, so let's have a look. Okay, that's a little bit too much. Bring the strength back up and the strength, I mean, uh, the skill back up and the strength back down. Do the same thing with all of these. Scale up, strength down. You don't want a lot of this. You really want really subtle movements. Let's do that. All right, let's have a look at that. That looks pretty good with the. You might, I might want to bring the strength up. I think bringing the strength up will help. Okay, that's 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 a bad example of ha having too much strength, but I want this to be like really shaky. That that's the kind of feel I'm going for. So I'm gonna turn this back up. Okay, after it hits the ground, it looks terrible, but we're not going to let it hit the ground. We're gonna stop the clip before it hits the ground so let's bring the strength back up and let's see how it does okay the x rotation is way too large let's bring this back down to something like 0 0.4 this is just like playing around there's no really perfect value just play around with it that looks pretty good at least to me um, a person who have never been interested in a helicopter and probably never will be interested in a helicopter in my life. Let's have a look at that. That looks pretty good to an untrained eye to a person who has never interested in helicopters in their life. That looks pretty good. Also, I think the landing is a little bit too fast, so let's bring it down a little bit. Timeline. Also, you don't have to copy what I'm doing. These are just optional steps. You don't even have to do a helicopter landing visual effects. Because really, because, okay, make sure to unlock these stuff before changing anything in the timeline. Because really, this is a tutorial about general visual effects. You don't even have to put helicopters in there. You can just put some sort of a giant monkey head or something. That Because that's what I did. So, what I like to do is to put a monkey head first and render it with that monkey head without all the animation and without all the other stuff because if you have that monkey head it's it's kind of you know like really it just shows if there's any problem in the motion track okay that's way too insane yeah that that's way too insane even a person like me can tell let's bring this down like 0 0.2 this is really just playing around with the values I'm going to be back when I'm done with playing around with the values. All right, so I think I'm done playing around with the values. Now this looks pretty, pretty good to me. I want this to end somewhere here. Okay, I want this to like crash into the ground because that will be pretty unrealistic. I want this to end at around frame 190. So, um, I think this is like going a little bit too slow, but the camera motion in itself wasn't too good when I started, so that's probably the main problem. See, it just goes off for like the whole frame. Alright, so, um, let's, let's just... just um let's just adjust this a little bit i don't like the helicopter at least to be in the frame the whole time see it's gone let's 
bring it back in. My fans are spinning up again. So let's add HDR lighting. If you have an HDR of where you shot at, that's great. That's going to be really good. If you have like an Insta360 camera or if you have like a DSLR or you can just merge it in Photoshop or if you have a phone, you can actually shoot um, HDRs with a phone. It's not going to be that good, but it's actually usable. But um, I wasn't able to shoot any HDRs because um, my phone wasn't compatible with the app. So I just took a HDR of HDR I ha Haven that kind of matched. See, it kind of matches. And make sure you have ambient occlusion blue enabled. That will just make it look so much better. Um, turn on motion blur. You're gonna need that. And let's just finish everything in the render settings because I don't want to mess with this anymore. Click transparent. And bam, you got a pretty good looking transparent image. So now, if you play it, you're going to get See, that's a little bit too quick. That That's the thing. Mm, let's make this a 30 frames. Yeah, yeah. On like the first render, I made a mistake of rendering it in 24, which really shouldn't be doing. Rendering in 30 frames. And see, it's in the, it's, it's in, it's in the uh, camera most of the time now. And let's extend this out to something like 210. Alright, that looks pretty good for what it is. You know what, I want to change the animation, this doesn't look good. Really, it's my fault, but like, yeah, this doesn't look good at all. I don't want my animation looking like this, so I'm just gonna change it. Because that's what I do, I always change in the middle of everything. I'm just gonna change it to what I want. That's the thing, That that that's what I really like about visual effects, because... You can change stuff at any time and nothing bad will happen unless you change something so major. Like, you can't just change the way you're going to do a Photoshop or like a painting, like a real practical painting in like the middle of the painting. You can't do that. You, you ruin the whole batch. But this, you can. Because like, it's to a certain extent, obviously. this like it's going way too slow it's going way too slow let's bring this to like 100 and let's bring this down to like 100 or something and this stuff like landed by 10 so let's go again okay make sure it's in linear interpolation so t make sure it's in linear interpolation because that's just going to improve your life this is going way too fast um my opinion in my opinion like the default um color values that you should get when you import an image should be non-color because most of the time when you use an image texture you use a non-color data because think about it um, when you want to pe make a pbr texture you're going to need a roughness map a uh, color map albedo some say um normal map uh displacement map and everything except for the albedo uses non-color data so why should why should it be color data you know like srgb it just doesn't make sense to me no uh, it's just my personal opinion don't get mad at me for it. okay this looks pretty god darn cool already Alright, this is kind of what I want, but we're going to have to mask out the tree, which is a pain to do on Blender, by the way. It's an absolute pain, it's going to, it's literally going to kick your ass, okay? 
also um just just another thing that i want to say i've seen so many people just talk about my render times are so slow my computer is so bad which it, it's true most of the time or a blender is so hard but they're using they're they're using blender 2.5312 you know, get the newest ver- Why do you think they- It's- Why do you think they make new Blender versions? It's like- It's so stupid. I'm like, yeah, fine. If you have like, the newest Blender version, and you have 1 gigabytes of RAM with a Core i3, understandable. Very much understandable that your computer is slow. But did you- Like- Oh, it's, Like- the ver every version of Blender it gets faster. Cycles render gets faster. So I really just don't know why people won't update unless there's like this giant glitch or something that literally doesn't en enable you to do anything. And so far, Blender seems to be good enough to not be doing that. You know. So I'm just redoing the process that I did before. Just adding a noise modifier. I'm just scale that up. Also, what do you guys want next? Like a car tutorial, or like what do you want? Like not a modeling tutorial. I suck at modeling, but like, well, what do you want? I don't. I don't know. I'm kind of open minded, and I'm not going to be posting tutorials that much because I'm because I'm literally a student, and I've got school works to do and other stuff. But I just, I just thought it was really cool. Like this, I I haven't seen any helicopter effects. Um. A tutorial so i thought it's really cool so i just tried to make one tutorial also um what do you like want me next to do oh my god the sore throat is really kicking in holy crap oh. holy crap Alright, everything looks decent for now. Okay, I don't like that it starts so violently. So I'm gonna offset this so it's just like. Okay, make sure to offset it so it doesn't have like giant like bumps like as soon as it starts because that's going to be really 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 uncomfortable so just put it on like something that won't trigger the heck out of people as soon as it starts that looks pretty good it it's all about just tweaking values that that's really in this tutorial it's just tweaking values the motion tracking was tweaking values the animation is just tweaking values that's in my opinion what cge is just experimenting All right, let's make it not go crazy off the bat. And that looks like a pretty solid helicopter. Ah, oh, Blender crashed. Are you kidding me? Are you kidding me, Blender crashed? All right, um, I didn't actually have a save, so I'm just gonna have to either do it again or I'm gonna search for an auto save. Do I have a recent auto save? There we go. That's also, by the way, can we talk about how good the Blender autosave system is? I think that's one of the best autosave systems I've ever seen because it seems to like autosave when it's like about to crash. And, and that is really amazing to me. I don't know how they do that. It's super cool. All right. So I'm just gonna offset the thing again. It's just basically where I was before I offset it. My um noises, add new noise modifiers. Also, if you want to, I can enable like the finger and the button clicks thing. I just don't want it. it's annoying. But if you ask, I'll probably do it. All right, there we go. That looks that looks pretty good. Let's have a look. Oh, 
Oh, it's really good. Okay. It's time to animate. The the helicopter um thing. That thing, you know? Right, so I am going to go to the first frame. Open up the properties tab by pressing N. And I am going to put the rotation to zero. Okay? You click I to add a keyframe. And where you want the thing to end. Okay, this is kind of where I wanted to end. Let's have let's have a look at it in render view. Also, in this tutorial, I'm really like what I want you to take away is, in my opinion, this is like the most important thing that I want you to take away from this tutorial is motion tracking and um, motion tracking and uh, uh, color grading, compositing, and masking. Those are the basics of visual effects, and I really hope that's what you take. Mm, the helicopter looks way too big. Yeah, well, let's scale it down a little bit. So, um, at first frame, I'm gonna scale this down to like. Let Let's apply the scale. Okay, let's bring this down to like zero point seven. Zero point seven. Zero point seven. Okay, now let's bring the rotation back to normal. The rotation is way off because like we like um applied the rotation on scale. Um just go like that. Alright, this looks pretty good. Alright, that looks pretty good. I'm probably gonna do like a soldier jumping out of it or something if I'm going ambitious. Okay, let's time to let's animate the propellers. Okay, whatever you call that. So I'm gonna add a keyframe right here. And up to the end frame. I'm gonna bring this up to something crazy like seven thousand. Like, there's like this glitch in Blender, like when you go too high, it's just gonna go really weird and it's just gonna not work. So I just like bring it to like, not too high. Remember to set the interpolation to linear because you want this to be like, what am I talking? You want the speed of the propeller to be the same across the whole animation. So that looks pretty good. That was actually really solid, all right. We might have to not. Oh, we can act. Oh, we we can actually get away with masking. It all it hits like like right here, like only in like couple of. As you can see. It like yes yes it intersects, but it's pretty good for like what it is. All right, so um, let's let's add a little bit more of an interesting lighting. We all we we are only using HDR lighting, which isn't very realistic on its own. Well, let's add a sun lamp. Add the timeouts also, by the way, what I also want you to take away from this video is to remember as much information as you can while filming the visual effects of um, video. I remember it was at around four o'clock. The sun was shining from the top right. It was shining from around here. This is where it, where it was shining from. Um, right here that looks really really cool um all right so also what i want you to take away from this video again 
is that cycles, if of if you can be avoided, in my opinion, is the best. Like EV is better if cycles can be avoided. So another thing that I would like to do, as you can see, um, the lighting and it's not casting shadows. Like if you switch to cycles, it probably will. Mm, you have to shut up, uh, you have to like um, get the shadow cutter stuff done but we're going to be doing this in EV so the shadow um, is in existence I also didn't know how to do this until I searched up in Google um, Google I in YouTube I searched up shadow shadow catcher EV and this youtuber um, blender tutorial he makes like really good short tutorials all right so uh this tutorial basically teaches you how to make a basically teaches you how to make a shadow catcher and it's really really cool so i'm gonna just make the shadow catcher from this tutorial and then come back um big props to that guy um his channel is amazing he does a lot of good blender tutorials and I, his way of making the shadow catcher is absolutely brilliant um basically you mix a, a black diffuse with um a transparent and you convert a white diffuse to shader to rgb and that's plugged into a color ramp and that's going to be the factor of our material output and this controls the intensity of if you go here you can barely see it but if you go like really really like go like close in the shadows are is completely black so i'm gonna put it somewhere and i don't want this to be like two i, I usually just leave the white in place um, i just I'm, i'll just put it somewhere here that looks amazing okay now that, now that we got the shadow set up let's do one of the final stuff okay we already got the sun lamp um, let's now. I think it's a little bit too bright the HDR. It's gonna bring this to something like 0 0.5. Also, by the way, if you bring it too down, the shader is not going to work. So, um, <clears throat> it's the catch of the shadow catcher in this one. Like, if you like bring this like if you bring like the environment light too down like too low it's going to ruin the whole batch so be careful about that I need to get i'm just gonna put this down to like 0 0.5 and increase the sun lamp okay i'm increasing the sun lamp instead of um increasing the Increasing the sun lamp until there is no artifact left and make sure to increase the angle because <clears throat> depending on the scene but um, I'm gonna increase this to something like 50 because I don't want the shadows to be like super sharp like if I raise up to one that's way too sharp I need something like 30 like something like that I can see the shadow but isn't as sharp as God Godzilla or something right now um most of our stuff is complete most of our animation is complete our shade is all compiled correctly now we need to add the elements that just makes everything look so much better also i don't think the graph editor i don't think the noise texture is really doing it for me so i'm just gonna scale it out so let's um scale this back out and let's also scale this out and let's also scale this out let's see that looks really good okay now what we're gonna do is um now what i'm gonna do is let let's add like a uh, something to uh, let's 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 add some dust. I think that's gonna be really fun. So what I do is I usually go to a website like productioncrate.com 
productioncrate.com and I just usually search for the also you can get this for free just sign up for an account and you can get like a free um, thing which looks really cool by the way so I'm just gonna go to um uh, where is it um, dust and smoke and just pick anything here you don't have to use stuff from here what I used for um, my final render was actually from another website called actionvfx.com and what I did was I searched for free this is also a visual effects place but but there is some really cool stuff for free which is really really cool so you got some blood stuff bullet holes explosion sound effects it's just effects I I took the dust waves it's really cool so what I do in here is I here's where the import images as planes add-on comes into play so I click import images as planes and then I search for action I search for my dust um, dust wave I just select um, the one that I want and I go I select emit and I bring the strength to something about five okay now it won't look right it looks stupid actually let's hide this so we can focus on this um, I want the background to be transparent and the bad thing about um, action VFX is that action VFX like when I when I get this um, it doesn't actually comes with an alpha channel so but you don't have to mask it out because blender has this I don't know how this works it's like magic to me but it's like this super cool feature that like automatically sort of like like it I don't know how this works but it somehow automatically um, takes out the foreground from the background even if it doesn't have alpha so this doesn't have alpha it's, it's a JPEG um it's a JPEG um, it's a JPEG image sequence. So what I do is I mix shader, transparent shader, and I add emission shader. Okay, these. This is how you can get um, transparency in any in almost. It's gonna. It's not going to be perfect, but you can get transparency, pretty good looking transparency, without having to have alpha. So it won't look right at first because it, we're in EV, and EV requires a lot of stuff. Set this to something like alpha hash or alpha blend, and then bring this to none. Click screen space. Wait, what? Oh yeah, sorry. There we go. That looks a lot better. Hey, so I'm either here. Um, yeah, I pl just please do not never ever take the color out of the factor for the mix shader. Okay, that's just gonna darken the whole image. Don't do it. Um, I I made a little mistake here, and I'm probably not gonna do it again. But like, don't do it. Okay, just keep the color as the factor. Now you got pretty cool looking dust. Um, make sure to like get it right. I wasn't doing it properly, but scale this up and rotate it so it matches our um, camera. That looks really, really cool. Really, I, I like this place. So, yeah. so what I'm gonna do like just position this uh, where I want it to be positioned and then I just rotate this around and as you can see we can somehow see through it so uh, I found out that the best w I mean it's a smoke so you should probably see through it just increase it to something like four um, and then I just add a new one now we're just going to duplicate this, we're going to put it a little bit in the back, let me scale it down or something, we're going to make a new texture, this time we're going to open 
another uh, movie clip. So let's search for Dust again. I'm not open. Um, seven this time. It looks very different, but this still looks really, really cool. So now you just got a whole bunch of visual effects just playing in there. Now I'm going to bring this strength down too, because I think that's a little bit, a little bit too much. And also this is opaque. Make sure it's alpha hashed. It's just going to save you so much time if you just make it alpha hashed. All right, so. So, I'm going to move it around, and there we go. We got some pretty cool looking smoke, just by using some notes. Alright, so now that we got some pretty cool looking smoke, let's render this out. Okay, so, um, this doesn't really look that good. So I'm going to rotate it, and sort of make it look good, by placing it where I want it to be. That looks really, really cool. And um, I think we are pretty much done here. We've got some pretty cool looking dust. That looks really, really cool. Um, let's also duplicate that and put that right there and just rotate that one in degrees. Also, um, make sure your color is in the factor. That will just preserve like the outside so it looks a lot better. So. Make sure you do that because if you don't, it's gonna look very weird. All right, so let's bring this down to like five. All right, so let's duplicate that. And this time let's put a new texture in it. This time it's going to be another dust that I've got. Dust 10, it, it's, a, it's another dust from that same dust pack. Oh wait, is it the same? Yeah, I, I think I accidentally put the same thing. Wait, no. I'm gonna duplicate that. I'm gonna open a new texture. Click that so it's a different texture. I'm gonna open a new one. I'm gonna search dust. Okay, this is going to be Dust Wave 7. That looks pretty cool. Alright, so just put that in there. Bring the mission up. It's just let's just let it play. Alright, bring the frames all the way up. Alright, let's just grab that back in there. Bring the frames all the way up. Alright, this looks pretty cool. And bring the strength of that one down so it doesn't look too crazy. And uh, there we go. We got some pretty cool looking dust. Yeah, it doesn't look like the most realistic looking dust if you want. Th this is just if you want. You can you can do this step. Um you can just um, add a domain, you know, add, 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 a, add a emitter, add like a s quick smoke, add, add, it's, in my opinion, it looks really cool even without having to do a smoke simulation. And I personally find smoke simulations the most annoying things to do, okay? Alright, so this is how you make uh, some really cool looking helicopter landing effects. Um, I did a little bit of color grading at the end, like a, a lot of color grading at the end, at the end, but, but it really isn't that hard to do the color grading. Let me just bring the end clip all the way up. Okay, so how I did the color grading, um, it's actually really easy how I did the color grading. So what I did was I just, what I did was, I Okay, this looks really cool. Alright, so now we have some really cool looking smoke puffs. That makes it look really, really cool. So, this is like the sort of last things that I did. This is really just optional. You can even not do this in Blender, you can do this in external program. So, add the color balance node in the compositor. Um, set that to offset power slope. It's just better. And just bring that a little bit yellowish tint don't make it like full yellow because that's gonna look stupid 
bring it kind of in the yellowish tint and also bring that all in the kind of yellow tint oh never mind um bring that in kind of a blue tint because in um offset power slope um the middle slider here is actually the middle slider here is actually reversed so so like if i go blue it's gonna go yellow and if i go yellow it's gonna go blue so uh, since it's reversed i'm just gonna do that that looks like a pretty good looking um composite let's let's render this once one frame and see what happens i'm not going to render the whole animation because i just rendered the whole animation of a few days ago and it's basically the same thing but just actually recording a tutorial so there we go this is how you make some really cool looking helicopter effects um if there's a few things i'll tell you make sure you have motion blur on that's going to help you and yeah this is basically how you do any sort of visual effects shot that isn't too advanced so every visual effects shot that i've ever done i just use this workflow motion track set floor set shadow catcher and just do whatever you want with it you can add dinosaurs in here you can do whatever you want but i thought helicopter was a pretty good example because it isn't too hard so this is basically our final render result if you liked it, make sure to like the video. Oh yeah, I forgot to plug the color. Oh, oh crap. Okay, I forgot to plug um the final color into the composite. So let's just render that again with that yellowish tint. So if I render that again. There we go. So um, I really hope you enjoyed this video. Um, I really hope you got something from this video because this video was basically a perfect speed run on how you can um, make um, your own visual effect shots with your own footage. Motion track it and set the floor and do all that masking and uh, masking, I, it, it, it wasn't really covered. I was experimenting on the helicopter thing for like two weeks. I finally got the result that I wanted. So I really hope you enjoyed this video. I hope you learned something from it.